Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is updates from council. We have any updates?
really wanted to kind of start the, the conversation is here. The preferred route, um, as you can see, it ranked highest in the majority of the categories. Um, the constructability, um, it rates a little lower than the secondary route here, uh, simply because of some of the aspects of going under structures, uh, like the trussle bridge. Um, you need a, uh, a shield. Um, the, the railroad requires a shield to, for liability reasons. Um, and then, of course, we have to consider the floodway uh, when going under the bridge. Here, we presented two options um, in the, in the uh, preferred alignment, and I'll get to that in a second. But basically, it's, well, I'll get to it right now. Uh, one is uh, once we get over Highway 255 or 25, um, how do we get to the other side of the uh, creek, Cane Creek? Uh, one would be to have the Greenway have its own crossing. That would be a pedestrian bridge, which would be in the shadow of Highway 225. And what that means is it would be easier to get um, uh, modeling, the modeling to come back as a no rise when you're in the shadow of the bridge. So, we would have the crossing near Highway 25. And then the other uh, would be to run along Highway 25. So actually utilize the existing bridge there, um, and it would be shared use, right? So you have the road, have some sort of barrier, and then have pedestrian um, and greenway crossers um, on one edge. Um, here we kind of talk about the, the comparing the two. Uh, ultimately, um, the bridge is a more friendly user experience, uh, but the cost, especially now that we've redone the cost estimates for 2022, uh, the costs are significantly higher uh, for the bridge option. And Jason, I've got the updated cost estimates in their packet that you all Okay, write. fantastic. Yeah, I have the PDF of that as well. I can run through that if, if you like. Um, so here's the preferred alignment overview. Um, uh, and I'll go into the insets in a second. We've got three insets, but basically we are coming from the park. We have to cross Howard Gap. Then we run along the south edge of the Fernleaf property. Um, we go under the trestle, under the Highway 25, uh, kind of loop around because we've got to get back up to grade, cross 25, or use the pedestrian bridge. And then you run along Cane Creek pretty much the rest of the way. Um, and you have some pretty wonderful, from our site visit, we've identified some pretty, three pretty wonderful creek access points. Um, and again, we've identified loop option, which is not currently in the cost estimate that, that you have, but just kind of put it on a map so that it's there. There is an option to create a, a loop. So it's not, it doesn't have to all be out back. So this is um, kind of zoomed in that first inset. This kind of shows what the options are. Um, and like I said, so the yellow option uh, would be to come around. Uh, that's the pro proposed sidewalk um, ramp. So we would come up here. Um, and then you can utilize this crossing here and come back down. And whereas the bridge option would be to come around and get up onto the bridge. And of course, like I said, we've identified the different structures required, um, the fencing and the debris shelter required to go under the trestle. There's enough room on the road to do a kind of a dedicated lane there? So what we've identified is, so there's an existing sidewalk right. to here, I believe, or uh, sidewalk, yes. So it goes to here, so this would be a sidewalk extension. Um, and I believe that sidewalk is five or six feet, um, and there is plenty of shoulder room to put some jersey barriers. Um, but what we've also identified, because we worked with TPD, uh, Traffic Planning and Design, that was on our team back in 2018, and they preliminary, now we didn't have the budget to go into all the details, uh, traffic analysis, analysis, but we preliminary, they preliminary identified, they think, by, um, eliminating this center lane, which um, they think it may, may not be necessary because of uh, where are we going to turn, right. um, that you can get a 10 to 12 foot uh, path along that way. Uh, it just have to be some lane, lane realignment. <clears throat> so this would be the 
other end set, this was this is right after this is the existing uh, terminus of the existing greenway. Uh, so right here, the traffic uh, planning design is proposing a um, for safety measure uh, some sort of a uh, island or stopping place so that and this is the case in a lot of uh, greenways where you can the user can come cross one lane of traffic. Um, and then rest and wait till they need to cross the next lane of traffic. They're also proposing flashing beacons. And then, of course, this last inset would be, and we, we did uh, include this as a separate item in the cost estimates. Currently, the main portion of the cost estimates in the greenway here, um, but this is the proposal, sort of a doorblock proposal. And we worked with the Conservative um, uh, Carolina uh, to make sure that these measures could be uh, through their easement there. Um, and we costed this out separately. But we just wanted to go ahead and identify that as like a future phase. So and then, if they cut right through that easement that was so extensive to restore the stream. I'm sorry? Did you just say that you're working with Carolina Conservation? Because my question was going to be in, in a few minutes that. Where in relation, where is this in relation to where we had all that extensive stream work done? Yes, so this is a portion of that. So this is the restricted easement. Mm -hmm. So there's there's one section up uh, in this direction and then the section where it comes in back and feeds into Cane Creek. Now what the, the boardwalk would require um, uh, is no impact. Um, federally, it's considered no impact like a 40144. Um, if you do certain footer types. And so this uh, boardwalk design, working with Conservative Carolina, is what we came up with with this boardwalk design here. So we can go through the easement. Um, there, it's very restricted. The easement is very restricted. I know. That's yeah. what I'm saying. How, how are you doing that? Yeah, but, um, but uh, we, we um, through using helical piers or other pier type systems, you can actually um, go in with to be like a raised boardwalk. Yes. 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 And remember, that's just for the boardwalk. I mean, if you just extend the trail without doing the boardwalk, just hugging the creek, you're, you're not getting anywhere near the stream restoration project. That's only if that, if you want to do the boardwalk, you can go over it or kind of encroach on it. And that would probably be a much later phase. Yeah. It's yeah, so that, that's proposed, at least back when we did this, that would be a future phase, and that's not necessarily in the scope of the process of, of what we're talking about right now. Right. So, um, got a couple cost estimates to go over with you. Uh, the first one, option A, this would be your full length, basically to the edge of the Meritor property, um, using the preferred route. Um, but only using crushed stone. So this would be kind of like a pressure run surface. So you have a hard, compact, probably six inch base uh, covered with a top coating of the granite fines. Um, and you can see the updated cost system is coming close to 1.7 million for that. Do you have to redo the crushed all? I'm sorry? So how often do you have to redo the crushed all? Yeah, so this is uh, maintenance in test, intensive in a floodway, which much of this greenway is in the floodway. So anytime you have a flood event, um, it would wash out a lot of stone. Um, and so that would not be Equinox's preferred option. Uh, we wanted to present that because at the time, the town asked us four years ago to, to come up with that option and, and kind of see what the cost estimate would be. Um, it would save you money up front, um, but the idea is that it may ultimately over the years cost more in maintenance. The second cost estimate uh, this would be option B. This is the paved option. And there are two numbers I want to point your attention to. What I did was I went ahead and broke out along 25, so the side lot uh, expansion, and if we went with the pedestrian bridge. Now, like I said earlier, the pedestrian bridge has gotten a lot pricier in the last four years. 
So the first option, if we went along uh, Highway 25, comes out to just about three million. So compared to the crusher run surface 1.7, the paved greenway um, at, I believe we had 12 foot wide, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 12 foot, yeah, 12 foot wide greenway, uh, which is what a lot of um, the greenways we're designing now are 12 foot wide, and in some cases through parks we're making them, we're requested to make them 14 foot wide. Um, however, in this particular case, I think um, you know the town can accommodate a 10 foot wide greenway. So this may be on the higher end if the town chooses to go with a 10 foot wide greenway. But that three million is with a 12 foot wide greenway. Um, and then of course, um, 5.6 million if instead of going along Highway 251, if you took that a pedestrian bridge option. So about an additional 1.6 million. And the reason is the bridge itself isn't all that, isn't that full cost. The bridge itself is about 1.8 million for the bridge um, because it's quite a span and that's looking at a steel truss bridge. Um, but the additional $700,000 for uh, the design of the bridge, the floodway modeling, and um, any contingencies related to that. Um, and then, are there any questions related to this class estimate? Questions? Comments? No, I think we're just in shock right now. In, in the dollar amount? Yeah. That. Yeah. So we are. So we are. One point three miles, and um, in Asheville, we're seeing two point five to three million a mile right now for the Greenways. Um, so this is somewhat in line with that, maybe a little lower. Um, but there's there's mo there's modeling involved with the floodway, um, in which you can't uh, you don't want to have a rise associated with the with the work you're doing in construction, so it has to be modeled and demonstrated, uh, um, and so that in addition to just the rising costs over the last four years, um, I believe the previous number was three and a half or something like that four years ago. Three, I think, yeah, with the with the bridge. So and the last thing I had was just that extension of the boardwalk. And the boardwalk would be about a half a million dollars. And I'm happy to, to go over any of the details of the cost estimate or the plan. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments. Mark. Now you're going underneath the railroad tracks uh, right there at the bridge. Yeah, you said you did do a study with the you know, environmental about the flood. Is it going to cause more, more of an impact when it starts to flood that stuff gets caught on about trees, limbs, or it makes make it more, uh, I'm going to try to say this, uh, cause more harm during the flood? Does that make right. sense? Right. So, yeah, I understand what you're saying. So the greenway itself, the construction of the greenway will not uh, cause any increase in rise or in flood event, uh, and there are no obstructions. Um, you can't actually, you can't add obstructions within the floodway um, unless you go through uh, a conditional letter of map revision with FEMA, with the floodplain administrator. So, um, yeah, it will not cause any increase in flooding. It will not cause any harm or any obstructions. Um, but I will note related to the floodway, when a greenway is in a floodway, um, sediment will deposit on the greenway. So that is going to be up to, you know, the parks department or whatnot to make sure after a flood event maintenance to, to clear probably certain sections of the greenway of some, some sediment. Now that being said, if the greenway is designed properly, um, so if a, if a firm is designing it correctly, it should shed water off of it pretty quickly. Um, a lot of times greenways, you know, may be relatively flat and sometimes they have like a, a grass verge that over time gets built up higher. 
so the flood waters come in, you get a little ponding on the greenway, and then the sediment drops because it slows down. But if you get an ounce crown on the greenway and get it to the shoulder, um, it should really reduce the amount of maintenance necessary. So it really comes down to the design of the greenway. More questions or comments from council? Just for everyone's benefit, you know, especially our newest council members. So we've been working with conserving Carolina for a number of years on um, getting to the preliminary design and get help from Equinox Environmental to do that first iteration of this preliminary design. It was first back in 2018. Uh, Fernleaf has agreed to provide access across their property and, and conserving Carolina is working on finalizing a grant, they have to get an appraisal, and they're trying to finalize an appraisal on it to get basically the right of way or easement purchase across their property, which basically parallels the creek. And then Charlie Owen is the other piece property owner. Once you go under 25, then that section between that 25 where you come up over the sidewalk there, whether it's a bridge across or coming at the at grade, until you get to the town's piece across from Meritor. And Mr. Owen has indicated he's willing to provide us access to that. Um, so now it's you know it's a matter of funding and getting to or getting to a final design. Um, so that's why I talked to you all about the possibility of the ARP funding um, being applied to this or a portion of it or a good or a good portion of it. And then and then uh, Conserving Carolina continues to pursue other grants to kind of layer this until we get to full funding. And and, and we put, we try to obligate within CIP, you have to fund it every year, but up to 100,000 um, from CIP in any particular year. So that's other funds to add in, um, try and get to, let's just say for sake of argument, uh, but the paved version without the bridge, you know, you're, you're around for a million to do that. Um, so if council's comfortable, we'll, we'll continue from a staff perspective to con continue working on assembling those connection points. And then we've, you know, got to come back to you with how much funding with ARP, local monies, any other grants to basically move forward with doing a full design and bidding it, you know, bidding will be an issue too because depending on the bids come in, then you got to be comfortable are we going to move forward, fill in any gaps, does it come in better than expected? Um, so, but I, 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 from staff wise, we really wanted to get this back in front of you to kind of remind you of the route, where exactly it's going, what kind of <coughs> up-to-date costs, and then are you comfortable with us continuing to move forward working with Conserving Carolina? Kind of, they're kind of taking the lead with some of the grant pursuit, um, pursuing the grant opportunities. I'm not opposed to have moving forward. Council, I think we're good. I'm, I'm, I'm not totally comfortable. Speaking of where it's going, where is it going? Like, where is the intent for it to? see where it stops and so where's the intent for it to go like so just stop out there in the field or yeah i mean it it <clears throat> terminates you know, i mean i've heard a, a, you know the other trail mentioned so i'm just curious yeah. what's the plan well the the plan would be then ultimately extend it from where it terminates over to um, the area that jason was mentioned that the, the Bigger Greenway trail system coming up along the you know, Oaha, coming up along 26. So, you think it's going to come out over to meet that? It, it won't. Um, it, it terminates out in the field. I mean, we can show you or measure it out to get the exact point, um, unless you can show it on the map. But it's it would be somewhere like near where the end of the town's property is across from Meritor. So it, it would still have a little ways to go go across then the Meritor, the properties that Meritor still runs across from the plant and then 26. Okay. 
seconds. The future loop, that's all though on Fletcher property? Yes. Nothing needs to be acquired yeah. for that. I mean, you know, if if you extend it, it adds a considerable amount of greenway trail. You know, even though at this point it doesn't connect into something else. I mean, our current greenway trail ends at the point you have to come back on it that goes through the park. Well, I'm, I've always been in support of trails. Um, I love trails. I just, uh, I, I guess I've got sticker shock, so I'm, I'm not a strong yes. I'm a maybe. It would depend on what Carolina conservation drummed up with grants. And, I mean, that's a huge number. And I'm just thinking about what residents would think about, oh, you spent three million or 5.6 million for a trail that's going out to the field. I'm well, just trying to make that And we want to eventually to be able to tap into the Hellbender Trail, which is a yeah. major trail that's going to go all the way from Asheville to the Henderson. That's what, that's what we're trying to get to, is get right. close enough that it's easy to tap onto that one as it Yeah. And that'll, that'll be a huge draw for recreation in the area, whenever they get that trail done. And that would hook up, I imagine, with the new uh, trail that's going from Hendersonville to Provost. Uh, I agree with Councilman uh, Franklin, or Councilman Franklin, about the sticker shock. It is a big sticker shock. Uh, I guess the question is, once it stops out here, who, who pays for it to connect to that Hellbender Trail from where it stops on our property out to Port Town to connect that? How, many, how, how far is that? Who pays for that? Good question. Because the county probably ain't going to pay for it. I feel that he, well, yeah, I mean, most likely not, unless we did some joint project in going after DOT funding or some of the type of grant funding or local appropriations to do it as well. So how successful is concerned here at Lyman Man? They, well, I mean, they, they've been successful. They've, they've spent a lot of time with the Acoustic Trail. There's been a lot of attention. And a lot of that's being paid with um, DOT grant and STPG, which I think has a 20% match on it still. And, um, so the county's put funding into it. And then grant funds as well. Right. I will, if Mark, if you don't mind, I will add that there is a lot of, I, I know Conserving Carolina is working on that for the town, but we do a lot of trails. And so we, I did offer Mark uh, an email with some other additional uh, grant sources and, and DOT. And I think right now, you know, the iron is hot, especially with um, infrastructure money um, as far as trails, greenways, infrastructure projects. Um, so, you know, I work with Conserving Carolina, I think there is a lot of opportunity to, to have this be grant funded, mostly. Um, and as far as stopping here, I think the bigger idea into the Hellbender Trail, which we're, we're currently extending, goes into Woodfin now, so beyond Nashville. So we're building the Woodfin portion. So Woodfin to Hendersonville um, is the ultimate goal. But this 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 is your this is the town of Fletcher's property. So in, in our mind is, is seeing how popular these trails are once they're built. I mean they're insanely popular. Um, ending here, I mean the town can just host events here. You can have farmers markets or events in the lawn or whatnot, and that trail gets you to additional town you know events and whatnot. And you can just do a natural surface trail for this portion of the loop so people can get their steps in. Um, if they don't want to do an out back. I think the idea is that this piece right here, um, the hardest part with linear projects is the land acquisition. It's getting the easements through through private property and just noting that uh, Fernleaf is on board and there's one other property owner. Um, I think the hardest part about this, other than the sticker shop, of course, is, is, is done, or it was, could be done. And I agree with that, being on actual town property, I, I'm all for about greenways being on town property, but like you're saying, you're trying to go through private property, but, you know, eminent domain is not a good word for, for greenways. Oh, yeah, of course not. Uh, we should never do that. 
Uh, another question, I guess, would be geared toward Mark would be uh, what? I know this is this the initial cost is the three million or the five million, whatever the council ever decides and in their answer. What's the what's the maintenance cost? What what, what we have to what we have to do to keep up with this trail was 1.3 miles. How much how much more maintenance that we have to put in the budget for something like that? If it's paved, it's it's not a significant amount more. If we went on the crushed stone, it's been doing it a lot more money because we're having to purchase the stone periodically, just like on our crushed stone portions that we have at the big park. Um, and then obviously staff, you know, people spreading it. Um, this doesn't, it, it, it's not as extensive, but, you know, it's policing it, there are, you know, people going down to check it out, make sure there are big limbs or something that's washed up and, and coming off of it. We haven't quantified the maintenance cost, it, you know, it does probably at some point push us into, and we, we've kept you know, two full-time and one permanent part-time maintenance for our park facilities, but it, you know, it may push us into additional, you know, more staffing, at least on a part-time basis, just to cover, to check, you know, to spot check the, um, the trail, but it being paved, it, it's not a significant I guess if it's paid with the grant stuff, like I was kind of curious about the maintenance. If we have to come up another, I just don't have numbers, two hundred thousand dollars for another person and grab whatever year or something like that. I guess we got to put that in consideration as well. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, it's, it's a very valid question. It's, you know, what other maintenance costs are associated with it being paid? It's nominal. Um, if it's crushed snow. Also, what people's tolerance are for the appearance. Some people like it looking maybe not pristine, but it looking really nice. And, and and then you get to those those um, harder to reach spots or those ones that wash out more frequently. And then you know it's pain going around because you got muddy spots. And you point to some of them at the um, billboard community park. So the pay is is not. I, I, we actually were staff-wise thinking we'll just get this thing um, going because it's been um, something with a lot of desire as far as park facilities to add um, to go with the crush snow, but it really, it, the, the more and more it becomes difficult to um, keep up a, you know, a certain standard of maintaining it or, or existing crush snow areas of the, the, the um, Billmore Community Park makes it, I think, a better option to go with the pay. I'm understanding the question here right now is not whether we're going to commit to it right now, but to continue exploring this moving forward. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're not looking for you to make an appropriation right now, but do you want us to continue to pursue you know, putting resources together for this to see if we can get to the point that we, you know, you're comfortable what we can um, layer here in this, and then you go to a, a design fitting on it. Do we have any idea how how long the rest of the trail will need to be to connect? I'm not we have not measured that. Uh, but we can do that. How get that idea. Yes. Yeah. No. It's, it's um, because I'm sure we can't get the. Most certainly, we will not be able to get any monies from the county. But if we come off of our property and further on out, maybe we can. I mean, I'm wondering if, if they would Does that consider beyond that. Does that housing development that's going on the Johnson Farm, do they own the property all the way up to the river?
property that they may own in a floodplain and gain money with anyway. Yeah, I'm just wondering about funding. I wonder if we can get you know, the partners like get the county on board to help out. I'd be surprised if the county chipped in. Now, now, I believe once you get past the Meritor, actually, that's all Mills River property, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. It's, no. It's uh, unincorporated Henderson County. No, is it? Yeah. But for additional funding, it might be worthwhile. I know we've always, many, many times we brought up dog wood, but I don't think we've ever actually pursued anything with dog wood that they do have. Yeah, for funds of their investing in our region. I, yeah, thank you, Barry. That's a good point. That's they just popped up and landed the skies to talking about them. There's also, um, you know, there's ARP money, you know, other stimulus money coming through the legislature that we'd like to try and pursue once they determine their rules on it. Um, and I don't know, Jason, if you've heard any more about that, but that's our understanding. There's a money is kind of infrastructure related that could go towards greenways um, coming through there. I'd be happy as we as things hit our ears, I'd be happy to forward information on all of you. And typically when they build greenways they're they've always been unbelievably expensive to and typically what you do is you, you build the pieces you can at the time and over time things fill in. It's awful expensive to try to do a long greenway in one shot. So you're talking about faith of the faces? Yeah. Faces and, and, and you know, funding as funding becomes available, you add another half a mile or something. I can uh, maybe either work with, with Equinox with you all or someone, but try and measure you know where exactly is this terminating because that was kind of part of some of the discussion we had with you all. To get, to get a fairly good idea for the map where it's ending. Yeah, it's, it's ending right at the edge of that property. Okay, so it's right at the edge. It's where the cost estimate ends. At the edge of the town's property yes. across the river. Okay. And then and measure how far approximately from that point connecting to the bigger system that they're trying to extend up near the residential development by a former tap I'm not clear where that is in there. I know it's somewhere. Yes, yeah, so I can go back and I can, I can look yeah. at that, that study that they adopted. It's Henderson County adopted that study. So I can look at uh, the Oahu study and see where that is. I kind of agree with the uh, council and Dave right there. Can you also put it maybe in phases? I mean, if we can't afford to do this as a whole project, if, if we can do it, do it say pavement, do it right for phase one, two, wherever the money allows as well. Yeah, I mean, you, you, even if you can't do the whole thing, let's just say for the sake of argument, you did what's been presented tonight, that has a fairly, that's a significant form, uh, part of a Greenway Trail extension. I would, I would say if you leave, so this first phase portion that I showed, that goes to the edge of the property, we'd probably need the ideal length um, for for all the grants that you'd be looking to get. And for example, as it is right now, just the greenway would not be an ideal candidate for the part of the grant, but if you were to implement just some stone creek access points and maybe one other element, like um, you know, some exercise equipment along the way, I think they require kind of three different elements. And then the part of the grant may be a possibility as well, in addition to some of these other It was a smaller one we got, but when we extended it out um, where it ends at the railroad tracks right now, um, and then there was there was a smaller grant that um, Conserving Carolina helped us with that created that loop trail that brings it back. So it adds a little bit more to the experience rather than just go to the end and you know, turn around and come back. It was a recreational trail program. Uh, I'm trying to remember well what that was called. It was either that or something through Division of Water Resources, I think. So are we comfortable moving forward or no? Or we'd like to get some more answers. My question is answered and maybe.
alternatives. That's why I would say, personally, I'm uncomfortable moving forward. But well, I, I think we, in general, know yeah. a rough idea of what's the cost. The unknown here is where the money's going to come from, what, what grants are available, available. But you got to have this this page done before you can get to the next one. I was supposed to be here on the yeah, I, I mean, it, it, some level of commitment to continue to pursue this helps. So, you know, we you know we can try and go after other resources. Having the ARP money helps a lot, because right? that you know, makes some significant dent in this. Whether it's half or all or some other portion of it, something is some significant. So, we're still going 
blue hemisphere. Trying to get like a happy balance of. I don't, I don't, but you were asking about moving the summer concerts. Yeah, over so there. So I. Yeah, correct. So we have one concert at Blue Ghost currently, right. and another scheduled for Billmore Community Park. My proposal is to bring the one at Billmore Community Park to Blue Ghost. We're seeing highly successful last year. Well, you've already got one in June there, and Greg said he already had the one booked for the community park. Well, I think he said he was able to move it as well. Okay. Well, that's totally up to him. Yeah, they, he checked that out and he, he made the decision to move it there. I like the option to have them in two different places so that people have choices. Just in case somebody doesn't want to go to the bar to, to do it, then it's okay. We'll still have something in the fall. I know they're going to do it in the winter, but the Christmas one's way different. It's cold and yeah. it's a totally different crowd. So I'm with you. I like the family night at the park, but I don't have one of the events at the brewery also. Yeah, are, are, are you saying you would like one to remain at the park for the summer yes. concert series and one at Blue Coast? Correct. Okay. Is that, uh, I think that's your position, Trevor. Is that your position as well? I, I, I agree with uh, Councilman Reed. Mm -hmm. But some folks don't want to be around the alcohol. Some people want to be I know you guys probably build the phone calls as well. But uh, yes, I, I know the, the the personnel with the issue sounds like from Greg. Did we ever have any part-time folks to help with clearing that at the end? Or? Well, we, we use mostly full-time full -time staff. To do it. It's not super labor-intensive to set up for the event. It's a setting up the stage and being out there during the event. The, the bigger issue was how much traffic we're getting, utility from, you know, benefit to the public. So it seems to me that the traffic that was pretty high in Blue Ghost, Blue Ghost also donated a portion of their, um, their sales. So it seems like there's tons of pluses from my perspective for it to be a Blue Ghost. Just turned and, then, and then we do also have the family festival and Christmas in the park. So it's not that it's not going to be the concerts at the park, but the summer concert series, both concerts. Be a blue coast. We can be highly beneficial, I think, in the town, our residents, and staff. And the they have those concerts at Blue Coast, they're, they're outside, as I said, the man's shelter is outside, so we're not really right inside, inside the way the alcohol is. Unless, unless it rains, like the one time last year when it rained, and they had to move it underneath their office. But at least they were able to do it, which if we'd had it at the park, we'd have had to cancel it. I, I do apologize. I was meant to get out there and do my due diligence and actually walk, go to the grocery store and get in there and actually put eyeballs on it. It's beautiful. It's just that there will still be people not go. It's packed most any night. Uh, I know Greg uh, stopped and made a comment to me uh, one day last week and said, I just want you to know I'm not pushing for you know, everything being a blue ghost, I'm perfectly fine with whatever council decides. He says it's not a big deal. So, okay. Greg's the horn. Pardon? So, Greg. No, Walker. Yeah. Oh, Greg. Yeah. Greg. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. made a point to yeah. say that to me. And he was, I also think what that's what that's supposed to do with me. Make a big decision to us. What happened with the evolution of it going over to blue ghost was a suggestion just to get more public enjoying it because it just kept diminishing in the park. Yeah, because the crowds so were getting pretty small there it's towards the end of and, and, and then it's not as much benefit to these sponsors too because the sponsors want to see people and interact with them and if there's not many people in there they're not getting much benefit from or our Last week, people don't want to go. They will go. They'll go to Hendersonville. They'll go somewhere else where they feel like it's more family friendly. So it's to me, it's not always about the money. 
that you're saying the attendance is so low you feel like it's not worthwhile. So the ones in the park tend to work best if we can combine them with some other. Yeah, with some event other. Event or something that's already right. bringing people if, in. If it's the concert by itself, it's really been diminishing. And I mean, to the point where we either just don't do it anymore. And like the, um, the movie night, that's mm -hmm. something that gets lots of people coming to enjoy it. Maybe we do two movies in the summer and not the, not the concert. So it's just that utility, that value that it's adding back is just diminishing for all the reasons we've talked about before. I, I don't have a problem with it. As long as we have like options for making it combine like the Bob was saying right there is family day, that family day right. concert. Uh, as long as they have as long as the, the people out there have options, you know, they don't want to go over here, but they can go over here on this day. And I'm, I'm good with that. As long as we have some small options.
so there'll be a discussion negotiation on that so that's they're trying to get that done in the next hopefully next couple of weeks they're trying to move fast because obviously the clock's ticking in our agreement with them um, so uh, that's in motion uh, just want to make sure you all were aware of that uh, real quick on the roundabout right here uh, yeah uh, the DOT has a little bit of right away they do, but uh, is that part of that? Say, if, if this ever don't go ahead and move forward, this roundabout, would they take it right away? I guess the clock tower's in, it's also part of this part of Fletcher, you that know, part of Wales. Yeah, so that's the whole. I just don't, you can't see how they might possibly have enough room there without tearing down Phoenix Street and you know, the Blood Building. Yeah, it's, it's fire it's, department. Historically, probably should pretend. It's interesting because that we had the same thoughts on that, and they. Um, and I can, yeah, this is real preliminary. I don't know how how well they actually measured it, but they handed out a map at it, and it, and it looks like it just kind of hugs the edge of the feet and seat building. Uh, there's enough room, really, at the intersection by the little straight there where Dan Gilbert Insurance used to be. The clock tower and skirts, like right by it. I don't know if it had to be pushed back a little bit. But it, it's yeah. Yeah, not simple. It's I know. Out there just push it a little bit. Yeah, um, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> they, uh, what what they designed preliminarily looks like it might be feasible. I mean, shockingly, as that sounds, at least on a, on a preliminary map that they put down. So, they do um, have the for four lanes, do they? Is there roundabouts or four lanes anywhere? There is, there is, but uh, yeah. people here don't know how to use them. They um, more and more you're going to see roundabouts because they. I would they, imagine so, yeah. but not on a major highway. I, I we've thrown out all those things and said yeah. that to them. Kind of sounds like they're looking for us to be the guinea pigs. Like the whole area. Like the figure eight up here at the interstate. They're starting to build those in places. I've seen those in It works. I'm amazed. Yeah. It does this, no, that, that, as crazy as it is, and I know it's, it feels weird going across um, the overpass there at Nighttime Airport Road, about 26, they work. That's, it's a diverging diamond interchange, is what they call it. It's a lot day. more traffic through there than they ever did yeah, before. It stops the traffic from backing up on 26. It does a whole bunch of things to help with that. Um, what does Jembo say about it? He's got more experience than anybody I know with DOT. I mean, I know I don't know squats, but still, four lane highway on the roundabout. I'm just wondering what he thinks. Well, and again, this isn't a given that that's what's going to happen out there. They, they were throwing out a whole bunch of additional improvements that they're looking at. These are like years down the road, right, to help with everything that's happening development wise in there and traffic flow of 25. Um, I, I, we haven't, I haven't really discussed it. Yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah, I mean, you know, they work. They and maybe this. I mean, we really questioned that they would work in this location because right. of the 45 mile per hour speed limit. There's not there's not traffic circles before it. It's kind of slow the traffic. Um, you do have signalization here that helps slow it down. You know, traffic signals before it. But I don't, um, I don't know. Yeah, the, the one at Howard Gap and Brookside Camp. Yeah, I just can't yeah, imagine as busy as our highway is that, you know, it's not a secondary road. Well, and I will say, Europeans, they've been doing them for a long time, and they have them. They're all over there. Eight, eight yeah. lanes wide. Wow. And they were doing wow. it. Wow. And, and you when you were not over there, there, it's frightening. <laughs> Pardon me. That's how we do it. How far out? I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's just, these were things they just threw out to us when we were the developers that was presenting the results of the traffic impact analysis and the improvements that came out of that. And then they, they started throwing these other things at us. Let so, me also ask you, Mark. I, yeah. The two subdivisions that are planned for Rutledge Road, have both of those already had their traffic studies done? Uh, I don't know that they rose to the level of having a traffic impact analysis done out there. 
they're, they, to me, that they, makes no sense. They, 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 there's they, more people there than they're going to be in this thing here. Yeah. You would well, think. Then, here, here's another thing that's it's, it's just, depending on who you ask, is kind of ridiculous. You know, it could be ridiculous. If they did these as individual requests, let's say you broke it into five mm -hmm. phases, and you do, you know, they talk about the convenience store gas station, the, the tribal stop, marathon, whatever it is. That's the first one. The next commercial building could be a second phase. You know, there's four that are in the in this plan and then two residential buildings. If they did them separately, it wouldn't trigger any of this. So we've even we've even posed that to them that they go back instead of the cumulative. There are some of these things us are, being, they're, they're, we represent the town though, and if, right. if, if it's going to produce enough traffic that it's going to be an issue, I just assume that DOT takes stand right now. The, the, the point is, because of the process, it's pushing more uh, onus on that. that if, you, if you never acquired this right. and let it happen organically, then you would have had, you, know, you name it little businesses out here, it wouldn't trigger it, right? So, and you're going to have the traffic coming out 25 regardless on this, and DOT looking at various improvements to that to try and mitigate how to handle it. So that, those are some things. Trying to go through these other options DOT is thrown out there, and, I, and, and really, I think we could talk about them for a long time. Not a lot, but there are some. 
um, Mark, if you want to explore the policy or no. I, I have that. I, you, thank you for sending an email on that, and I'm going to go through that and get back to yeah, the rest of the council. Yeah, because I know we've got a time with me coming up there the budget. Um, and and, and the mayor is referencing this population threshold. So we have 15,000. Yeah, we have to review with them. And there yeah. are rules, by the way, on refusing to sell it. You can't refuse yourself unless you have a valid reason. You know, just because you don't believe in something, you can't not vote. You have to vote. And if, you know, if you want to spend some time going through that with me, I'll do that. And any other help from you know, the school government's a good resource. Um, give some interpretation or scenarios. Um, if we want to get some additional help. Um, so I just encourage you to spend some time. I mentioned last week the request for traffic survey studies, one on uh, Presley Hill, the other one on Tulip Tree. Presley Hills, you know, off of 25, you know, Goodwill, that road heading down there that connects and there's all the background to Cane Creek. So Public Works put out their counter equipment, they did a seven day survey, and the traffic results were remarkably close to about two, three years ago on that same location, on that same road. Um, a mile per hour, the average speed limit over the posted. So it, the data is not supporting, and I'll, I'll get the whole report probably at the June meeting where we have a little comparison of the data from several years ago to when they just did it on uh, Preston Hill, so you can see. And then from there, you know, maybe beat the some targeted traffic enforcement with police. Um, it's not motorized at the level of doing you know, um, speed bumps on there, speed tables, I call them. Uh, which what I is the issue with two or three? There, it, that's a road, you know, that's off of, the road. Okay, off of Rutledge. And I think the concerns from residents about cut through. I, I'm, now I'm, I haven't got that exactly, but the person who brought it to me, I think it's leading into concerns about cut through traffic through there. Um, you know, it's a little complicated to take that road and come all the way through to get you back over to Fan Bridge. But um, so that's this month, Public Works should be putting out the traffic monitoring equipment there to get some traffic counts and you know, speed on that types of vehicles. That kind of um, but that's, as I understand it, or as conveyed to me, the issue. Um, did, did you say that their DOT is going forward with some kind of improved interchange there at Rutledge Road, Fenway Road? Traffic line. Well, that, that should well, prevent some of the people from cutting through Windsor Forest. If the traffic starts moving smoothly, right. people will lose the, the reason to cut through Windsor yeah, Forest. Right. That, that intersection. Just between coming out from Old Case Road, which is that second phase of Windsor Forest, and people coming down Rutledge, yeah. it just it's tough, especially those people coming up from Old Case. We've heard October for this year, yeah, of this year for the traffic signal installation. So I mean, I thought that was very encouraging to hear that they're going to put that in. But yeah, there's concerns, uh, you know, residents in Windsor Forest with the two, you know, residential developments on Rutledge, the two single family homes in the process. Um, I mean, we've even, I even had the same resident conveying all this to me about that's way far off my gates up at Windsor Forest, which would be pretty difficult to do. Is it's usually something you kind of do before you have an established development. Um, we've got towns maintaining roads in there too. So, um, uh, so that just some things happening with, and I, we'll look like for June to go back over the results from the Presley Hill um, on the journey and then see if we have any other updates on if we do that in two or three. Um, 
the budget process. So we held our uh, budget retreat or budget workshop last week, and I thank you for you know, a lot of good feedback uh, to me and the rest of the staff that were at that. Uh, so we've got our recommended budget, making some tweaks based on the feedback that we received. The next step will be the uh, budget message and draft of the budget that will be available for comment and review, and that'll be by June 1st. And then we'll advertise for the public hearing for the regular meeting of June. So that's kind of our next steps. You know, nothing major, you know, adjusting from the, from the retreat meeting. Um, probably the biggest thing is, you know, we're looking at those courts within the CIP, the basketball, tennis court, so I, I've already directed um, our parks rec director, Greg, to begin with McGill to just start kind of the preliminary thoughts of just further analysis on that site that he presented to you, um, or that I shared with you that he was looking at. So, um, and I'm, you know, again, and I think for the public's benefit that, that are here tonight, the uh, shred event pill drop, I, I don't have the data on the amount of medication that were turned in from the, the pill drop. Um, and that's something we need to receive from the police department still. And the, um, the amount of tonnage that was turned in that was shred was in the 5,000 to 6,000 pound range. So it's a good event. Um, we'll do it again beneficial. next year. Pardon? Still beneficial. Yes, yes. Now I apologize, I didn't get a CT or Blackboard calling system did not get that out. So I, I think some people look for that reminder they didn't get that. So that was an oversight in our part to get that out. Um, that's all I got on the manager comments unless there's any questions. I've got a couple of uh, issues. One with the a ARP funding, one of the things that we talked about was possibly looking at some sewer additions, particularly like on Westfield. Has Eric been formally tasked to find out how many houses are involved in a situation like that? Uh, no. Well, I think no. that's where we're at that point now where we need to, we need to know how many people are involved. And, and those people are going to, I would assume it's going to be all or nothing. You're not going to, let's say there's 10 houses involved. Five of them want it, five of them don't. I can't see us spending half a million dollars to put a pump station for five houses. The other issue that I have is uh, I've had some discussions and I talked some with Mark. I'd like to have us formally ask or task Eric and the planning department to come up with numbers for the five districts or the districts in Fletcher as to how many households are in the district. I, I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced it's time either we re, redraw the districts or do away with the districts. I refer to the voting district. Yeah, because I mean, since, since, since I've got on and been in, in my district, I doubt if we've had 10 houses in 15 years. But there's other places out where Sheila lives where they've added Livingston Farms and all these other things and over where you live has been added. There's been a lot of things added. So yeah, but I, you're already in density. You, you, you've got all those subdivisions already in your area. We're just playing catch up and Duper Street, I guess. I, I, I will bet you, I'll bet you, you have three to four times as many houses in your district. Uh, possibly, seeing as how the zoning was terrible back at that time. But that's what I'm saying. We, we need to, at some point, per acre, yeah. decide what we want to do. Do we want to redraw them, or do we want to just, I would prefer to do away with the districts myself. Uh, yes, that would make sense. I would prefer to do away with the districts, too. I don't think the city of Hanson will have districts, so they can not have districts. It would appear to me that we probably could do away with them, too. I think the challenge there is probably, I believe it's in the charter. I'm correct there. Yeah, you might have yeah, 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 I, I, I know the General Assembly. I think it goes back to the General Assembly to yeah. change that method. The, it's not just simply a decision of the 
prior collections. You, you, you all have to drive that and request it. And, it, um, and we, in follow with Bob's comments, I did reach out to sometime back to the elections director. She indicated, you know, we could um, work on getting updated population numbers or households by district. Um, so the county needs some help from the county and their um, staff to help with GIS. But eliminating the districts and just having that's a large average general assembly, correct? That's my understanding. But I, I think there's no information. But I'm open, but I, I, I'm definitely not opposed to that. I just see the, I want to make clarity, but I do want to see the numbers as well. I can see the pros and cons about that. If you, yeah, if you do. Yeah, yeah, I hate to just throw, just jump straight into it, but the, the numbers would be interesting what Bob talking about. I, I would yeah. just like to see it cleared up before the election and a year and a half from now. Yeah, I, it, I think it'd be interesting for y'all to know just what is the problem. Originally, it was done like that because when Fletcher first became incorporated, there were the people that lived over towards Hoover Creek. Hoover Creek didn't live there their whole lives, and that seemed like the rest of Fletcher was a mixture of, of a lot of new people, and they were afraid that one would dominate the other one, so they created these districts. But well, now we've got some divisions that are spread everywhere. It's already kind of pretty well mixed up. And I'm waiting for participation of other people want to run, and they all live in the district, and they are the opportunity to do so if they want to. Yeah, but you want, a, you want all four council people in one area? If, 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 the, if, the, if the whole town elects them, why not? It's almost like that for every It's not like the areas. It's just one area that's doing the electing. The whole town is doing the electing. That's, that's my point. If, if you've got a representative from each area of your town, whether you redistrict it or not, everybody votes on everybody. But if you don't, if you just get away with districting, districting at all, you could wind up with all your council members being from one subdivision or you could. part of town or whatever. So yeah, that's, that's I don't time. know that that would be great. Then you all have really a representative like any people go to uh, this uh, council in Franklin and Hoover Street areas, people go to the your area, Keith. You kind of lose that representation. Uh, representation. representation. Yeah. Yeah. So I know you want all the council members all people from different districts to come to me and ask me questions. Right. I don't think that's right, but I, 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 I hear what you're saying. I don't think they're wrong. But I think that point needs to be made as well. However, it seems to me the first good step would be getting those numbers. Get the numbers. Yeah, it's very Any more business? No. Yeah. Any more business for council? Any none of our motion to adjourn? Our motion to have a second. Second. Thank you.